man, I mean, like when I got into nootropics, my entire life changed. Like my productivity doubled. I was able to induce focus on cue, motivation on cue. I just felt amazing. Anaracetam, oxyracetam, 9 methyl B carboline. Like the choices are endless. And what you can do if you're stacking effectively, it's incredible. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ryan. And this is the Thunder Channel. And this is also episode number 132 of the Cortex Labs Nootropics Podcast. Thanks so much for being with me. Uh, I am on the road. So if you hear cars around me beeping or me beeping at other cars, I'm on the road and have road rage. And I'm just joking. Um, We're going to talk about a, a question that came through on one of the Nootropics forums about dopamine supplements. And uh, really the topic of the question or the base of the question is do, do dopamine supplements work for motivation, right? It's a very general question. Then the person sort of goes into what they've tried. And I want to explain uh, both answers to that question because no, uh, not necessarily. And yes, uh, if everything is right, dopamine supplements should, should be very effective for motivation. <clears throat> In the meantime, guys, what supports this broadcast is a couple really epic nootropic products. Number one, the Cortex Nootropic Stack Look, almost six years now um, in business, that thing ships to 40 plus countries. It is a powerful motivation, focus, mental energy, verbal fluency, nootropic stack. Get the Cortex stack at livecortex.com. And if you get it regularly or you want nootropic shipped to your doorstep every month, do the auto ship option where for cheaper, you get Cortex shipped to your doorstep every 30 days. If you're new to nootropics, you got to get nootropics ground zero. It's a video course that I created with new people in mind. I'm like, if you know, if I was brand new to nootropics as I was 14 years ago, what, what kind of information would I need to save me three or four years? I created that information in a video course. It's called Nootropics Ground Zero. Listen, if you're a guy that needs to raise testosterone, we have a highly effective test raising protocol called the Viking Testosterone Protocol. It is upgraded from its previous version and it is ripping hot. Get it at livecortex.com. Uh, if you are a dude that needs to shed fat, we have a now perfected, highly effective weight loss program. It's a consult with me. It's two months long. I get pretty deep into everything that you're doing. And if you follow my instructions, you will lose weight and it will not be difficult. It's called shred. Get it at livecortex.com. Last thing, if you are a middle-aged business person or young business person, and you're in need of like full-on mental optimization, hormone optimization, energy optimization with nootropics, with research chemicals, really with whatever is available to us, which is a lot, we've got one-on-one biohacking programs with me. You work with me pretty much every day. It is sick and fun, and we get results uh, either the three-and-a-half-month or the six-month intensive. Get those at livecortex.com. Okay, so... The, the OP, the original poster's question, uh, involved him trying a Drafenil, uh, him taking supplements like L-Dopa, uh, him fussing with chemicals like royal jelly, which are supposed to like enhance dopamine signaling, and a few other things to boost dopamine, n- none, of, none of which worked for motivation, okay? Guy was like not motivated to do work or like whatever it is that he's into, the question was like, you know, he, so he started questioning, do dopamine mean something that's actually like work or is this all BS? Like what's going on? So the answer is, I'll give you the yes answer first. So yes, uh, all of those and more like Bromantane, 9-MEBC, uh, even C-Lank is, uh, is a pretty potent dopaminergic. Yes, they work, but they, they work under the conditions that, that everything else is right. Like, you know, you, you have a compound that is, is supposed to do something. And if, let's just put it this way, if physiology lets it do that, your physiology lets it do that, it'll absolutely work, right? And, you, and, and you'll achieve motivation. Everything that's dopamine related, kind of interest in things current and new, uh, libido, if you're a male or a female, like you'll have sex drive. And you'll have just a general renewed zest for life. That's that's what the dopamine side does. However, um, those chemicals that are highly effective in some situations, the situation where physiology, again, lets them be highly effective, can also be highly ineffective at, you know, giving you the dopaminergic signal, right, or effect. They, they just won't register in that way, and therefore you're not going to be motivated. Here are a couple of reasons why. 
Um, which is why all these posts have to have nuance. And I usually get in there if I answer these posts on like Facebook groups or whatever, I ask questions, you know, I'm like, well, what is your, what is your baseline? Like, do you have any blood work recently? These are the kind of questions you have to ask. Primarily cortisol. Okay. Let's just look at cortisol for a second. Uh, deficiencies in cortisol and cortisol signaling problems are like rampant in the, um, how do you say it? Maybe like the sort of new age, um, you know, health blogosphere, because a lot of the other information in the new age health blogosphere is not, uh, it's, it's ultimately not healthy for people, you know, like these excessive hardcore workouts in the absence of adequate carbohydrate intake, right? People are, a lot of people are on carnivore or keto, whatever, because it's like trendy. Um, like not sleeping well. Oh, you only need five. I only need five. I don't sleep. Like, you know, like whatever that kind of crap really, uh, you know, among other things, like people could be in severe caloric deficits because they're losing weight, but they're sort of doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, meaning doing it wrong is being in a severe caloric deficit. You don't need to do that. And you shouldn't for sustainability purposes. Um, and all these stem and stress and then like business and then work and people are up taxing their brain and taxing their energy and whatever. All these things lead to imbalances in cortisol, usually raising cortisol substantially. And then as anything happens in physiology and especially the brain, uh, and we're dealing with the HPA axis, uh, a down regulation, a homeostatic compensatory mechanism that kicks in gear and makes you make less of it, makes you signal less of it, uh, potentially down regulates uh, cortisol receptors, um, maybe fussing with ACTH, you know, your, your, your creation and your spawning of cortisol. <clears throat> and then you end up in a place where definitely energy baseline is going to be inhibited and definitely y- your, mo- your capacity to be motivated from anything that would otherwise make someone motivated is a lot less. Like, it's like you take this thing that, or a series of supplements that like, you know, like world renowned, like th- this should improve your motivation, but it doesn't. That's because your your ability to have uh, waking, walking, functional energy is impaired when you've got cortisol signaling issues. And no amount of nootropics are going to help. In fact, in that situation, nootropics, probably you should steer clear from most nootropics unless they're very, very mild, maybe like low dose dynamine. Uh, people even have an issue with caffeine when they've got cortisol problems, okay? So that's one example of where dopaminergics wouldn't work. What would you want to do? Well, in that case, you'd, you'd want to recover cortisol. <clears throat> Licorice root is a great option to recover cortisol over time. It's unclear how long it will take for people to fully, fully recover cortisol and start making it on their own and uh, having adequate energy from taking licorice root consistently because, you know, also that's not really the full picture when you have uh, that kind of condition. You need a, a pretty high influx of B vitamins. As lo- as much as you can stand without, you know, people. some people get side effects from B vitamins, anxiety, itchiness or whatever. You know, if there's a lot of nice in it, you can end up with like a flush of some type, uh, et cetera. Some people may even want to take a lot of vitamin C, uh, so that they can raise aldosterone concentrations. Cause usually when there's one adrenal hormone down, there's other adrenal hormones down as well. Okay. So cortisol is like a major inhibitor of dopamine supplements, allowing you to actually feel the effect of dopamine and motivation as a result. <clears throat> other fatigue syndromes. Okay. Any other fatigue syndrome that, that is out there that like you realize is, is semi-chronic, um, and, and consistent. I mean, it really only has to be two, three weeks long to, to get into that category. That fatigue syndrome, whatever is underlying it, whether it's sluggish thyroid, whether like you've got like some hardcore sleep apnea or otherwise sleep problem and you're not adequately replenishing neurotransmitters, getting adequate rest, etc., that's going to inhibit your ability to, to notice dopamine supplements and have them do what they're supposed to do, what chemically they should be doing, and that's giving you motivation, right? You know, it's like you can't pour into this reservoir of, of dopamine and make it work when you got empty reservoirs you know, elsewhere. Um, sleep alone is a huge part of that. Right, let's just call it sleep and alcohol because we sort of just touched on sleep. You know, people think that uh, they can booze, like maybe they've got a booze habit and it's like, you know, two to six drinks a night or something. And then that fusses with your sleep in most cases, uh, whether like wakes you up anxious or, or you just don't get like solid, solid, deep, restful sleep. 
And then you wake up and try to take a nootropic and like you haven't fully gone through the process uh, like the sleep spindle process and the neurotransmitter replenishment process and tissue recovery and general recovery process that happens when you sleep. And then you're trying to take a dopamine supplement or dopamine supplements and it's just not registering the way that it's supposed to. You've got to fix the booze issue and you've got to fix the sleep issue first. Medications. Look at what medications you may be on, you know, taking, having, having took uh, historically. And those, some of those medications, like, I mean, SSRIs are a good example. They, they, they're inhibiting dopamine projection, signaling, maybe even receptor function. Uh his historic uh, stimulant use has a has a very known ability and a strong ability, sometimes not even over a long period of time, to interfere with dopamine receptor <coughs> function. <coughs> excuse me, and dopamine receptor health. In a way, which if you're taking dopamine supplements and you're forcing dopamine release like with something like modafinil or adrafinil or whatever, like you, you may not actually be able to notice it because receptor function is just not up to par, right? So when the, the, the signal binds to those receptors, it either doesn't because they're desensitized or it does, and but it doesn't provoke the same response downstream and you end up not getting a good response from dopaminergic supplements. There are pl- And it's not just like SSRIs or Adderall or, or like, you know, benzos as an example <clears throat> that are fussing with dopamine. It's plenty of other things, man. I mean, there may be antihistamines that are fussing with dopamine. Uh, there could be there could be like you know painkillers that you're taking that are fussing with dopamine. If you're taking kratom or something, that could be fussing with dopamine. You know, if you're taking like, like otherwise some other supplement that you know you're administering for like one reason or or the other, like you got to make sure that that thing isn't fussing with dopamine in some capacity. And then lastly, I would say. If you've done any of those things, right, uh, that we that we talked about or like any of those things are the case for you and one of them, you know, like uh, mischievously has messed with the dopamine transporter system in a way which has downregulated the dopamine releasable pool, well then most definitely you're not going to get a response or a good response from dopamine um, raising, you know, or, or, or signaling nootropic compounds because you have a reservoir of neurotransmitter systems. They all come from the same place. Each of them has their own sort of origin areas, origin projection areas, and they get downregulated too. They get programmed to not make uh, if, if they give a neurotransmitter, you know, for serotonin, it's the RAF uh, nuclei. Uh, for dopamine, it is the ventral tegmental area and some other areas. Those areas can get downregulated. So if that's happening because of something that you have done in the past, any one of these things or some of these things, especially pharmaceutical stimulant medication, uh, then you have a problem and you absolutely won't <clears throat> respond well to dopamine supplements. But where I think this kid was who, who was asking the question was really just in sort of some sort of uh, some sort of fatigue syndrome. That's it. <clears throat> um and you got to fix all these things first. You've got to take time to research incessantly and then fix these problems before you can start responding uh, to dopamine center compounds. But then though, let's not forget about dose. Let's not forget about like nootropic stacking strategy. You know, if, if, if you don't have the strategy down and there isn't some thought and good synergy behind what you're putting together, then you're, you may not get the response. You know, a good example may be... Um, you're just taking modafinil and like it's supposed to be putting some extracellular dopamine release in the in the picture, but like you've got a downregulated releasable pool. And so you're not even releasing a lot of dopamine. So the effect from modafinil on the dopamine side is just not going to be very pronounced, in which case, obviously, longer term, you've got to fix the releasable pool situation. But meantime, you may benefit from taking something like L-DOPA, right? Or um, a, a food-based precursor to dopamine, like something that's got tyrosine or phenylalanine in it, a sup- supplemental version of ty- tyrosine or phenylalanine, and then working on the conversion side with bromantane or high potency B6, uh, fostering the dopamine conversion enzymes. Okay. That's like, you know, that's like another reason, but otherwise stacking. I mean, like what if your bromantase, bromantane dose is too high, your L-DOPA dose is too low, and your 9 MBBC dose is too low, right? I mean, like, like all of this matters. Whatever it is you're trying, your royal jelly to, uh, you know, dose is, is 
is too low. Your your knack is too low. Your B6 is just too low or too high. Like everything matters and the doses have to be correct on the dopamine supplements that you're taking in order for you to get a response, to get the response that you need. You can simply take way too much modafinil, not have any problems with any of these systems, but it's so much modafinil and then like the uh, the wakefulness peptides that it's facilitating, I think they're called orexin neurons. It, like it's making you so awake and so energized that it's putting you in that state where you're sort of skipping beats and you're operating too fast. And then you've got this like nagging anxiety. No one's motivated in that state. <laughs> you know, there's no way that you're going to get motivated or be motivated in that state. Okay. So all of these things go into you responding well to dopamine supplements. Every single one of these things goes into that. And you've got to be, you know, super conscious of that. Uh, and what's going on so that your response to dopamine supplements is proper. Like th- these systems are are not systems in which you can be like, hey, you know, I'm just going to take this supplement. It's supposed to do this or this this set of supplements. They're supposed to do this and then have them do that. It just It just doesn't work that way. And that's sort of the, I don't know, maybe in some people's minds, like the painstaking part of nootropics is like, actually, you kind of have to understand a little bit of brain physiology to get the best results. And you definitely have to understand stacking strategy, right? You know, the logic and the methodology that goes into stacking and and using compounds that synergize well together, uh, formulating the doses on your stuff intelligently first, right? Your first crack at it has to have methodology behind it. And if it's wrong, which it, it may be in the first couple tries, you have to know how to adjust. We teach a lot of that stuff in Nootropics Ground Zero. We also have a course called Nootropics Masterclass, which teaches you way more advanced level stuff on adjusting and stacking. We've got digital guides on it. We explain it in most of our digital books and audio books. You can find it at livecortex.com. So go get those if you're concerned about any of this. <clears throat> in the meantime, thanks so much for listening, guys. Cortex Stack supports this broadcast. Look, I mean, God, if all other things are right, that that is a very powerful dopamine-centered stack. You're working on dopamine receptor function, dopamine release uh, via uridine and CDP choline. It's just a very, very powerful stack. Initially created for entrepreneurs, but it's like, look, anyone that wants to be productive where all things are right, you can benefit a lot from Cortex. Get it at livecortex.com. Get auto ship to have it shipped to your doorstep every month for cheaper. Like that's blowing up right now. Um, and people are like, dude, this is so much easier. And then I just have Cortex. Like I don't have to think about it. It auto runs, auto charges, auto ships every month for cheaper. Uh, do that at livecortex.com. Guys, uh, men that are thinking about doing consults with me, I've only got a couple slots for like the next three to six months on either the three and a half month or the six month intensive one-on-one biohacking, nootropics, energy, hormone optimization programs. I think I have to keep going because we do everything in those programs to make people fully, fully function awesomely. But there's only a slot, you know, a couple slots left and there's people in the pipeline that may close any day. So if you've been thinking about doing any of those uh, consults, go to livecortex.com, add which consult you're interested in to your cart and buy it. Pull the trigger ASAP. You do not have a lot of time. Do that at livecortex.com. Shred weight loss program. If you're a guy that wants to lose weight, do it. If you're a guy that wants to raise test, Viking testosterone protocol upgraded. Find it at livecortex.com. And if you are a PSSD sufferer, we've got either the full consult, which is really six plus months, however long it takes, or we've got a PSSD basic, which will get you some regimens and get you some good traction early on, but it's substantially cheaper than the full on. It's called the PSSD basic get that at livecortex.com. Get all this stuff at livecortex.com. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. More podcasts to come soon. Talk to you next time.